this is a dynamic calendar. You can select the year right here. Let's put 2025, January, and boom. We've got a calendar that populates right over here on the right side with all the proper dates. And if you noticed, it will actually blank out the days that are before the current month as well as after the current month with some conditional formatting. Now, this one formula right here, this sequence formula, is creating this whole calendar. So we're going to paste that back in there and boom, it automatically creates it. We got some drop down data validation over here on the left for the month. And really the only thing you have to type in is the year itself. We make it adjustable for each year. Let me show you how I built this. First of all, we've got some data over here that we'll just make visible again. This is the months of the year that I'm just using in the drop down list here in C3. But let's start from the top. You really just need a selection here for the year. This is just general text. Type in whatever year you want, 2027, 1902, whatever. So one thing to note here is that this month will not update immediately. It's still in 1999 territory where I had it before until we change it manually again after we change the year. So just something to be aware of the way that the auto calculations are working here in Microsoft Excel. But be that as it may, let's look how we did this. The first thing I did, and this is a sequence video, so I'm using sequence here as well. I'm grabbing a date because I want this to be January the 1st. But I don't just want it to be January and then type February and so forth. I want to make a sequence that puts all of the first days of the month down here. And to do that, we create a date. We use C2 for the year. So this first little slot right here is the year, which is going to be 2021, as I typed it in up here in C2. We're going to do a sequence of 12 rows and one column, and we're going to start with one, and we're going to step up by one. This sequence is going to be for the months. So that's going to go through each month, and then for each of those, we want the day to be the first. So down here, if I re-highlight this and I change the format to month day, so you can see that this is indeed January 1st, February 1st, so forth and so on. I've just got it formatted as triple M for the abbreviated month because I think it looks better for the drop-down list, which we'll talk about now. For the drop-down list, we want to go to data validation, up here, and we're going to look at this rule that we have. We've created a list, so we're allowing for something out of this list, and the source is this B5 through B16 range. So we're just making sure that the only thing we allow is a value from these first days of the month of whatever year we selected. So there's 2025, and again, you can see that the value right here is still holding that 2021 date until we actually change this to April of 2025. So you do have to select this if you change the year. You do have to update the month so that it works properly. Okay, that's how we get all that. And then what I just did down here is I just blanked this out and put it as white text so that it just looks better. Uh, you can store that in another sheet. That's probably what I should have done, but whatever. It's down there in column B. Now for our actual calendar, we need this to be six rows tall because if we have the first day of the month over here on a Sunday and the last day of the month, it's a 30 or 31 day month, we are actually going to spill over to this sixth row. So the first thing that we do, and actually let me find a month there so we can actually see the text because of the conditional formatting, it was whited out. So here's the sequence formula. We got sequence six rows seven columns, that's the seven days of the week, so it's going over seven and down six. And uh, the problem is we, we can't just say, uh, let me show you what happens if we do this. We can't just say start on the first day of the month and then go up to 31. Well, that's going to be funky. A, my conditional formatting is wonky right now. But B, the first day of the month is not always going to be this Monday. That's why we have this math magic stuff going on here. What we're doing for the starting day, because we have to have a value in Monday for the sequence to work, we're going to take C3, and that is September 1st, right? September 1st, 2025. And we're going to subtract 
the weekday of C3, and then we're using this three value. Okay, what on earth is going on there? Let me show you what happens when we use weekday. If we use weekday of C3, we're going to see that it gives us this date because I haven't changed this to a number. So let's change it to a number. And now we're going to get two. Two is the weekday value for September 1st, which is Monday. But we also have some return types. So what we want is return type three, where Monday is zero and Sunday is six. And that's going to give us zero for weekday of September 1st, because September 1st is a Monday. And because of our return type, that's going to be zero. Now, this is going to make sense in the next step. Why do, why do we care about this? All right, let's change this to October, and I'll show you why we care about it. In October, weekday of October 1st is a 2. And in order to put a value here, what we want to do is take Wednesday, which is the 1st of October 2025, and we want to subtract 2 from it and then put that value here. So we want this actually to be September the 29th, September the 30th, October 1st, right here, so that we can have our sequence work and not get in the way of where October actually starts. So we're getting this weekday value of the 1st of October, and then we're going to subtract that from October the 1st. So we'll say C3 minus 2, we're subtracting those two days, now that's October or that's September the 29th, which is exactly what we need here for our sequence to work. So that's really the only confusing part of what we're doing. But once you wrap your head around it, it makes total sense. Here's December, December 1st right here. This makes zero. So we're subtracting zero days from December the 1st. Let's do January. January is Wednesday again. Let's do something that's not Wednesday. There's Tuesday. So Tuesday, weekday of Tuesday is one, as you can see right here, we're subtracting one from that to put the value right here, which would be December the 31st. And now the last step of all of this is how do we get it to be formatted in this way so that we don't actually see December 31st right here, we see a blank cell. And that, of course, is just some custom conditional formatting. So I'm going to manage the rules and show you the two rules that I'm using to make this work. The first one is this one right here. They're actually the same formula, but I'm applying them to different ranges. So I'm applying them here to E3 through K3, which is this first row. So it's possible that the first of the month falls on Monday, in which case we'd see all of these numbers. It's also possible that it would fall way over here on Sunday, in which case we want everything before that to be whited out. So to check, we say month of E3, which is right here, is not equal to month of K3. So if this is December 31st, it's December, not January, it's not equal to K3, then we're going to format this in, and I just put this as white color and white background. So it just blacks it out, or whites it out rather. And the reason we're comparing it to K3 is because K3 is always going to be in the current month. We can't just skip down and start the month down here. It's going to fall in one of the seven days of the week, right? And so that's why K3 is held in place by the dollar sign and month E3 is not. So this will check each of these in the range of the conditional formatting. And we're doing the same exact thing here for the last rows of the calendar, comparing a day that must be in the calendar, E5, with all of the other days. If you like this video, check this one out next, where we go through creating a sales invoice that automatically saves as a PDF in Excel.